Welcome back, Michael Dickerson, KC9PHK, presenting some videos and associated with 5.9 Radio. If this is your first time joining us, you're probably going to want to go back. This is the 2023 to 2027 general class question pool. There's a video one which covers the first sub-element of this question pool. You want to go back there if you've just found this video and started here. Starting today with G2E, Digital Mode Operating Procedures. G2E01 says which mode is normally used when sending RTTY signals via AFSK with a single sideband transmitter. The answer is lower sideband, LSB. G2E02, what is Vera? And Vera is a digital protocol used with WinLink. G2E03, what symptoms may result from other signals interfering with a Pactor or Vera transmission? And that's all of the choices are correct. So, frequent retries or timeouts, long pauses in message transmission, failure to establish a connection between stations. But the answer you want to look for is all of these choices are correct. G2E04, which of the following is a good practice when choosing a transmitting frequency to answer a station calling CQ, CQ using FT8? And that's find a clear frequency during the alternate time slot to the calling station. G2E05, what is the standard sideband for JT65, JT9, FT4, or FT8 digital signal when using AFSK? That answer is USB, upper sideband. G2 E06, what is the most common frequency shift for RTTY emissions in the amateur HF bands? That's 170 hertz. G2E07, which of the following is required when using FT8? It's going to be a computer time accurate to within approximately one second. G2E08, in what segment of the 20 meter band are most digital mode operations? commonly found. That's going to be between 14.070 MHz and 14.100 MHz. G2E09, how do you join a contact between two stations using Pactor protocol? That's join an existing contact is not possible. Pactor connection, connections are limited to two stations. G2E10, which of the following is a way to establish contact with the digital messaging system gateway station? Transmit a connect message on the station's published frequency. G2E11, what is the primary purpose of the amateur radio emergency data network mesh network? That's to provide high speed data services during an emergency or community event. G2E12, which of the following describes WinLink? WinLink. WinLink is all of the above, so it's an amateur radio wireless network to send and receive email on the network, a form of packet radio, and a wireless network capable of both VHF and HF operation. G2E13, what is another name for WinLink Remote Message Server? That's going to be a gateway. Gateway. G2E14, what could be wrong if you connect? cannot decode RTTY or other FSK signal even though it is apparently tuned in properly. And all of these choices are correct. The mark and space frequencies may be reversed. You may have selected the wrong baud rate or you may be listening on the wrong sideband. G2E15, which of the following is a common location for FT8? And it's approximately 14.5. 074 megahertz to 14.077 megahertz. Sub-element G3 covers radio waves. Three exam questions come from the three groups. First up, G3A, sunspots and solar radiation, geomagnetic field, and instability indices. G3A01, how does a higher sunspot number affect HF propagation? And that higher sunspot numbers generally indicate a greater probability of good propagation at higher frequencies. G3A02, what effect does a sudden ionospheric disturbance have on the daytime ionospheric propagation? 
It disrupts signals on lower frequencies more than those on higher frequencies. B3A03, approximately how long does it take the increased ultraviolet and X-ray radiation from a solar flare to affect radio propagation on Earth? That's eight minutes. G3A04, which of the following are the least reliable bands for long-distance communications during periods of low solar activity? It's going to be 15, 20, and 10 meters. G3A05, what is the solar flux index? That's a measure of solar radiation with a wavelength of 10.7 centimeters. G3A06, what is a geomagnetic storm? That's a temporary disturbance in the Earth's geomagnetic field. G3A07, at what point in the solar cycle does the 20 meter band usually support worldwide propagation during daylight hours? And that's at any point. G3A08, how can a geomagnetic storm affect HF propagation? It can degrade high latitude HF propagation. G3A09, how can high geomagnetic activity benefit radio communications? They can create auroras that can reflect VHF signals. G3A10, what causes HF propagation conditions to vary periodically in a 26 to 28 day cycle? That's going to be rotation of the sun's surface layers around its axis. G3A11, how long does it take a coronal mass ejection to affect radio communications on Earth? That's going to be 15 hours to several days. G3A12, what does the K index measure? That's the short term stability of the Earth's geomagnetic field. G3A13, what does the A index measure? And the A index is the long term stability of the Earth's geomagnetic field. G3A14, how, long, how is long distance radio communications usually affected by the charged particles that reach the Earth from a Solar coronal poles. And that's HF communication is disturbed. G3B covers maximum usable frequency, lowest usable frequency, short path and long path propagation, determining propagation conditions, and ionospheric refraction. G3B01. What is the characteristic of sky wave signals arriving at your location by both short path and long path propagation? Answer is a slightly delayed echo might be heard. G3B02, what factors affect the maximum usable frequency? It's going to be all of the above. So path, distance, and location, time of day and season, and solar radiation and ionospheric disturbances. G3B03, which frequency will have the least attenuation? for long distance skip propagation. That's going to be just below the maximum usable frequency. G3B04, which of the following is a way to determine current propagation on a desired band from your station. It's going to be use a network of automated receiving stations on the internet to see where your transmissions are being received. G3B05, how does the ionosphere affect radio waves with frequencies below the MUF and above the LUF? That's going to be, they are refracted back to Earth. G3B06, what usually happens to radio waves with frequencies below the lowest usable frequency? They are attenuated before re reaching the destination. G3B07, what does lowest usable frequency stand for? Oops, gave it away. The lowest usable frequency for communications between two specific points. LUF means lowest usable frequency. G3B08, what does MUF stand for? And that's the maximum usable frequency for communications between two points. G3B09, what is the approximate maximum distance along the Earth's surface normally covered in one hop using the F2 region? That's going to be 2,500 miles. G3B10, what is the approximate maximum distance along the Earth's surface normally covered in one hop using the E region? It's going to be 1,200 miles. G3 
53B11, what happens to the HF propagation when the lowest usable frequency exceeds the maximum usable frequency? It's going to be propagation via ordinary sky wave communications is not possible over that path. G3B12, which of the following is typical of lower HF frequencies during the summer? High levels of atmospheric noise or static. G3C covers ionospheric regions, critical angle and frequency, HF scatter, near vertical incidence sky wave. G3C01, which ionospheric region is closest to the surface of the Earth? That's going to be the D region. The D region. G3C02, what is meant by the term critical frequency at a given incidence angle? It's going to be the highest frequency which is refracted back to Earth. G3C03, why is skip propagation via the F2 region longer than that via the other ionospheric regions? Because it is the highest. G3C04, what does the term critical angle mean as applied to radio wave propagation? That's the highest takeoff angle that will return a radio wave to Earth under specific ionic atmospheric ionospheric conditions. G3C05, why is long distance communications on the 40, 60, 80, and 160 bands more difficult during the day? That's the D region absorbs signals at these frequencies during daylight hours. G3C06, what is the characteristic of HF scatter? Uh, signals may have a fluttering sound. G3C07, what makes HF scatter signals often sound distorted? Energy is scattered into the skip zone through several different paths. G3C08, why are HF scatter signals in the skip zone usually weak? Only a small part of the signal energy is scattered into the skip zone. G3C09, what type of propagation allows signals to be heard in the transmitting station's skip zone? That's scatter. G3C10, what is near vertical incident sky wave propagation? And that's short distance MF or HF propagation at high angle or elevation angles. G3C11, which ionospheric region is most absorbent of signals below 10 megahertz during the daylight hours? It's going to be the D region. All right, next up we'll cover G4. We're going to save that for another video. Thank you for joining us. Again, if you're not subscribed, please go ahead and subscribe to the 5.9 Radio channel so you're receiving all of our updated videos as we release more.